Starting engine number two. Okay, sir, copy start in two. All right, start two. American 827, taxi echo, Foxtrot out. Romeo 640, then flight kind of. Prime and 5000, rock for one departure. Good. Confirm for the ready. Sunwing 733, that's not the only truck on the 07-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-7-0-
Close to me. Here. Tell them. Put your head in the corner. Hotel Romeo Tango 119 Tower 118-175. Hotel Romeo Tango 119-117. Good day. Come on, Bravo. Check. Uh, take off checklist. Uh, take off checklist. Engine bleeds are on. Packs are auto. Landing gear is up and off and flaps are up. No lights after take off checklist is complete. Actually, you know what, that is a vital component of everything that we do because the overhead panel is pretty much, uh, or actually panel contains everything that pertains to everything on this aircraft. Um, straight down from flight controls to electronics to hydraulics, um, the only thing that we do not have up there are indications. So basically everything up here gives us an indication on the lower, at least within our glare shield, or on the main instrument panel as to what's going on. Right off on the top here, let's start with this panel here. This here is pretty much just for the IRS, the inertial reference system. And I'm not going to go into detail about every single component as to how it works and all of that stuff. But I think you could probably see the basic things here. If it's off, you could align it, or it's set to nav, which is what we are right now, or the attitude, right? Uh, you also have some indication lights on the top end here. If you push them, they're pushed to indicate, right? It will tell you which, which component, and these are all literally failures. Sorry, this one here would flash when the IRSs are aligning, but these would all indicate a problem with the IRSs. And you could actually enter positions in the IRS up here. 
On the left side here, we have our leading edge devices, which would deal with your leading edge um, slats, leading edge flaps and such on the front end here. We, we have our ELT up here. Um, one thing that I think is fantastic about Boeing is that it actually has a dark cockpit concept. So basically all of the lights in here are dark for normal. The only time you are going to see a light is when you have a fault with any of these here, right? Uh, these here pretty much are just your gear lights, but we'll get to those in a sec. But when you see one of these amber lights, that means that there's a fault in the system. Outside of that, when it's dark like this, that means the system is operating normal. So IRS and your leading edge devices. On the front end here, we have all of flight, the flight controls. And these are just alternate systems that would come up when we look into the QRH. This here is pretty much all of the controls. Um, if there is an abnormality within the system, if there is a failure, then this panel here pretty much controls what we do based on our QRH to regain control of the aircraft. Right? Once again, like I said, I'm not going to go into every single detail, but it's the same concept, right? All dark cockpit, and these lights just indicate that there's a fault in the system. We move down here. This, uh, this panel here deals with all of the navigation components, uh, whether it is VHF, your IRSs, your FMC. So basically, if one of them fails, you have the ability to switch between left and right, and we have um, uh, duality in systems. Right? So that deals with the navigation system. When we go down below that panel, we have our fuel panel. We've got a cross-feed valve, so if we've got, let's say we have an engine failure on either side, it now permits us an opportunity to use fuel from the opposite side by simply turning that switch and adjusting the pumps whichever side is needed. Right. If you move up here, this panel here mostly deals with your electrical. Not all of it, I mean some of it but it pretty much goes through all of the things that are required electrically. I mean, right on the bottom of that, there's also the drive, but oh, we'll get to that. And it tells you just about all the things that you need from the, ver from the various system, with your volts, amps, DC volts, frequency, and all that stuff, right? And there's no preset position. If you want, you can just cycle it. There's no requirement to do this, to go through and see what each component is doing, because of, once again, if the system does not function, then you do have lights that are going to tell you what's going on. Right? So there's really no requirement to monitor all of these systems. They all self-monitor. Right? On the bottom end here, we, we have pretty much the same thing with your, with your drives. These are driven directly off of the engine. And then we have a standby power, which we could uh, tap into on the side here. If we go down here, this here deals specifically, so basically if you're to turn off these generators or you have an engine failure, you're going to have a corresponding drive light on either side, right? And the center switches are basically for the APU generator. If we need a ground power, when the ground power is connected, this light here lights up. When it comes full blue like that, that means that the power source is good. The same thing for the APU and these outside. Yeah, for these outside lights. When you see a blue light like that, that means that the power source that we have is good enough and we could actually utilize it. If we go up here, these are just um, conveniences, just circuit breaker lights, panel lights. We go into the equipment cooling here. Basically, this here just um, supplies power for a cooling system in the equipment cooling bay downstairs. Emergency lights. Whenever this is armed in the arm position, basically if you lose power, then it automatically lights up the um, strips in the back end. And we could also turn those on if we wanted to, right? We have a fasten seat belt sign. And our, uh, <laughs> believe it or not, we, this, this is the do nothing switch because I think the lights are always on, which is your no smoking sign. Call button, this here permits you to call the back end. When you press that button, or when they call you, sorry, this here is going to light up, it's going to say we have a call. Until we answer it, this light here doesn't really go out. Then we've got a ground call button. If we wanted to call the folks down in the uh, front end when we're on ground, simply push that button and it's going to give a, a bell in the back, th in the bottom end there. And uh, then they should answer. Ready one, in all honesty, 
I don't know what this does because we never use it. It is something that we never ever really <laughs> use. And we've got our two wipers on the front end here. If we were to go on the top end, up here again, or better yet, why don't we go a little bit further up? We've got our third radio comm, which is what you are currently using. And then we have something called the engine control panel. Basically, there's are electronic engine control switches. And once again, if there is an issue with the system, the system will, will tell you what's going on. So there's no need to monitor it. They're all self-monitoring, right? Passenger oxygen is here. If we wanted to let down the passenger oxygen in the back, we'd simply pull hard enough. This lock wire is going to break, and we simply uh, let down the masks in the back. We've got our flight recorder, and these are just our test system for our, our um, stall, stall warning, right? So to bring you back to this panel here, this is simply our window heat. It is a requirement on this aircraft, and believe it or not, when these heat when these heating panels are off, it actually strengthens the integrity of the um, windshield. And all of these also, they have their own warning system that come, come with them, right? On the next panel down, we have something called our engine and wing anti-ice. If we were to turn these on, what's going to happen is that you're going to see that these valves are going to open. Engine anti-ice is up here. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. It takes uh, bleed air from the engine to warm up the front cowl, right? Front end here, we've got the hydraulic panel. There are two engine driven and two electrical driven. I don't think that there is much else that can be said about that as just hydraulics, very straightforward. On the bottom end of here, we have the door lights that pretty much tells us which doors are open. When you go down to this lower panel here, it tells us about our pressurization, what the pressurization is really doing. Right now we're at uh, flight level 370. It's showing that we have a cabin altitude of around 8,000 and a pressure differential of roughly 7.9. And on the lower end here, this indication here just tells us if our cabin is climbing or if it's descending. And generally when you're, when you're climbing, you want to see that go up a little bit, and then after that, it should stabilize to zero. If, for example, we are to suffer from, um, let's say, some kind of decompression right now, what you are going to see is that this here is going to say that the cabin is climbing. So you're going to climb, 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 and what you are going to see is the differential will go down, and this altitude is going to go up. Cool. Top end here. We just have our um, temperature control, right? If you were to rotate the switch, it just tells us what the temperature, we have a, an indication on there, what the temperature is doing through the cabin, and we can control the temperature through there. All of these are self-monitoring system, right? You go down here, recirculation fan, we've got two of them, and they, they operate to simply recirculate the air through the cabin. We've got two packs that are responsible for air conditioning and we have something called the isolation valve. So basically, if one system fails, we could isolate that system so that only one system operates. And we generally have that open when we have the APU on. Why? Because we need the APU air to start the engine, right? Uh, so these two bleeds are just being bled off the engine to supply pressurization, heating, and a variety of other systems in the aircraft. On the lower panel here, we've got our another component of our cabin altitude. So basically, we're, we're set to flight level 370, is which we are right now. So that pretty much tells the computer what altitude we want and what pressure differential is required at this altitude. It also shows on the lower end here the altitude that we're going to land at, uh, rounded up to the nearest hun um, 50 feet. On the other side of that, we have the pressurization control panel, <laughs> or um, switch. When we put it in auto, that means that the aircraft and the computers do what needs to be done to maintain the pressurization of the aircraft. If we set it to manual, that now gives us an opportunity to control the outflow valve so that we decide what the pressurization um, system is doing. But that is only 
use as a secondary function. Basically, if we have an emergency, we would use it in a manual mode just for uh, controlling the cabin altitude. On the lower panel here, we have our landing lights. These are the two far left ones are retractables, and these two are fixed in the wing. And then we have two turn off lights also pointing outwards from the wing that pretty much eliminates the, pretty much what it says, right? The turn off. If you're going to turn right, it would give you a wider display on the right and left. We have a taxi light, and this taxi light automatically comes off when the gear is retracted and it goes on when we have a landing clearance. We have our APU switch. Basically, to turn that on, all we do is take it from this off position, push it straight to start, and then it resets to the on position. When we have to turn it off, we simply pull it down a little bit and push it to the off position so that it goes off. We have our starter um, igniters, uh, two of them. And we could select this. In fact, when we are in uh, heavy turbulence or icing, you can actually select it to both. And these here in heavy, correction, severe turbulence, our SOPs dictate that we take these to flight. Right? And on the far end here, we just have our lights, basic lights. We've got our logo lights. It, it's um, off above 10,000. Sometimes guys like to put it on in high, high density area. But then it goes on below uh, 10,000. Strobe goes on, anti-collision light, and then we have our wing. If we wanted to see what's going on there with the icing and stuff like that, it's very difficult for us to see from where we are right now. But um, if you're going to go and do a walk around or someone back there says, look, we need to take a look at the wings, or we like better visibility, put the wing light on. Wheel well light basically just eliminates inside the wheel well for when we want to do a walk around um, to go in there and take a look at what's going on in the wheel well. And that's pretty much your, the upstairs panel in a nutshell.